In this video, we are going to learn about two concepts, molecular mass and formular mass. So let's start with the molecular mass. Before we start with molecular mass, we need to know what is a molecule. A molecule is the smallest particle of matter which has independent existence. Whereas atom is the smallest particle which does not have any independent existence. So the independently existing smallest particle is the molecule. There are some problems while calculating the molecular mass. What are the problems in the measurement? First of all, they are very small in size. The masses are really very small and due to the small masses, the calculation also becomes very, very difficult. So like atomic masses, we always calculate relative molecular mass. Now, expressing the molecular mass, there can be two ways to express the molecular mass. First way is the relative molecular mass, which is calculated relative to a stable isotope of carbon-12. And the second way is by adding the atomic masses of the constituent atoms. We know that scientists have already calculated the atomic masses the relative atomic masses and all of them are listed in the periodic table. So we can take those atomic masses, add them together to get the mass of the molecule. Now we are going to see both the ways. Now let's start with the relative uh, molecular mass. So relative molecular mass which says Molecular mass of a substance is equal to mass of one molecule of the substance divided by mass of one twelfth of one atom of C12. Now let's see what is this one twelfth of one atom of C12. Suppose this is a carbon atom. I have divided this carbon atom into 12 parts and I have taken out this small part. Now this mass of the small part is nothing but one twelfth of one atom of C12. So over here we are dividing this small mass. Now after calculating the molecular mass there should be some unit by which we can represent it. The unit is generally called as AMU. It is also expressed as EU and the full form of this unit is atomic mass unit. Some books you will find AMU in some books, you will find U. Both of them are correct. Suppose we have a balance like this. On one side, I have a molecule of CO2, which is carbon dioxide. And on the other side, I am going to keep the 1 twelfth of the mass of one atom of carbon. Now, in this case, to equalize the both sides, I have to multiply this by 44. So, which means one molecule of carbon dioxide is 44 times heavier than 1 twelfth of one atom of carbon 12. So, this is an example of how the molecular mass is calculated for a single molecule. Now, there is another way of calculating the molecular mass by adding the atomic masses. So we can calculate the molecular mass by adding the atomic masses of the constituent atoms. Let's see some examples and understand how we can calculate the molecular mass. First example, let's take carbon dioxide. In this we have carbon and oxygen. So the constituent atoms are carbon and oxygen. We are going to use the atomic masses of these two. Atomic mass of carbon is 12 and atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So molecular mass of CO2 would be 12 plus 2 into 16. We are multiplying 2 over here because we have 2 atoms of oxygen. That's why we multiply 2. So this equals to 12 plus 2 into 16 is 32, so it's 44. So now by this method of calculation, also we are getting the 
molecular mass of carbon dioxide is 44 and in the previous method also we got the mass of carbon dioxide as 44 which means both the methods are correct and authentic. Now we can take some other examples also like SO2. Over here sulfur has atomic mass 32, oxygen atomic mass is 16. So molecular mass of sulfur would be 32 plus 2 into 16 that is equal to 64. We can also calculate the molecular mass of chlorine. Atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. So molecular mass of chlorine would be 2 multiplied by 35.5 which is 71. Because we have 2 atoms of chlorine combining to give 1 molecule of chlorine. So we multiply 2 with the atomic mass. Similarly, we can take water as another example. Hydrogen has atomic mass 1. Oxygen has atomic mass 16. So molecular mass of water would be 2 multiplied by 1 plus 16 that is equal to 18. So this is how by adding the atomic masses we can calculate the molecular masses. Now molecular masses can be expressed in terms of grams which is known as gram molecular mass. Suppose I have carbon dioxide which is having a molecular mass of 44 AMU. If I express this molecular mass in terms of grams then this is known as the gram molecular mass. There is a problem in calculating the molecular mass for ionic compounds. Now what are these problems? Let's see. Ionic compounds do not have any molecules and the formula represents only the ratio of positive and negative ions. If I say I have NaCl, NaCl is not actually the molecule, it's the ratio of Na and Cl which means they are in 1 is to 1 ratio. So in this case instead of molecular mass we have to calculate the formula mass by just simply adding the atomic masses of the constituent atoms. So let's define what is the formula mass. Formula mass is the sum of the atomic masses of various atoms represented by the formula of an ionic compound. So let's take some examples and see how we can calculate the formula masses. It's almost the same as the molecular mass just that we are calculating it for ionic compounds. We have to keep it in mind. So for sodium chloride, sodium has atomic mass 23, chlorine 35.5. So the formula mass of NaCl becomes 23 plus 35.5 which is equal to 58.5. Similarly, let's take another example KCl. In this, potassium has atomic mass 39 plus chlorine has atomic mass 35.5 which is equal to 74.5. We can take Na2SO4 which is sodium sulphate. In this sodium has atomic mass 23 plus sulphur has 32 plus oxygen has 16. So 2 multiplied by 23 plus 32 plus 4 multiplied by 16. So it's 46 plus 32 plus 64 that is equal to 142. So all the units are AMU or you can also write simply U. So these are the formula masses of these ionic compounds. I hope all of you have understood how to calculate the molecular mass and the formula mass. Thank you for watching the video.